good morning so in the last lecture we had uh, covered the topic of electronic instrumentation in this uh, lecture we will uh, delve into the topic of digital instrumentation which is one step further from electronic instrumentation okay, and more specifically we look into digital voltmeter okay now what are digital instruments so in uh, contrast to analog instruments where the indication is a pointer deflection in digital instrument the actual numerical value corresponding to the measurement measured quantity that is being displayed okay and uh, in case the measured quantity the measurement is not a voltage it is first converted to an equivalent voltage signal and the digital equivalent and the digital equivalent of that voltage would be computed in digital instruments the advantage that you have for digital instruments over analog instruments is that merely because of the display being digital there is no question of parallax and uh, because the digital uh, display can span multiple digits the resolution and accuracy of a of the digital instrument first of all it is not dependent on the human observer or the person who is taking the reading and it is much much better than that is achieved in any that is achievable in any analog instrument okay so it has better accuracy than compared to an analog instrument and since the final output or final output is actually a digital signal that is either displayed the same digital signal can also be transmitted in case uh, and uh, and also stored uh, and this is in contrast with an analog instrument where the display is actually a deflection and there is no proper way that is mechanical deflection can be either stored or transmitted without significant loss Now, in a digital voltmeter, it is basically an electronic circuit which would convert the voltage, current or resistance that is being measured to an equivalent analog voltage, frequency or time interval. Okay, you, it may seem that uh, this is counterproductive because you are again converting the measured quantity in an e into an equivalent analog voltage whereas if the actual purpose is to measure a voltage that is if you are actually using it as a voltmeter then why are you why is the final stage an analog one that question may come up but you should notice that there are other uh, modes also it can be converted to a frequency or a time interval and uh, in quite a few digital voltmeters this conversion the ability to convert to a time into to an equivalent time interval is being ut utilized or it, it is being exploited actually okay and uh, regardless of this this analog voltage is again digitized for the display and through an a2d converter it is uh, converted to an equivalent digital output and that digital output can now be displayed on a digital display or it may also be transmitted to for further use for some other purpose okay the main advantage that the digital instruments would have over an equivalent analog instrument is that as i said earlier the resolution of a digital instrument is much much better than 
achievable in any analog instrument. In fact, resolutions of 1 in 10,000 or uh, which is basically 5 digit display is easily achievable in case of a digital instrument and this is totally impossible in case of an analog instrument. And uh, to the same extent, the accuracy to the extent of 5 parts per million can also be achieved. Okay. And the same instrument can be very easily recalibrated to measure voltages from the range of 1 volt to 1000 volts. Okay. You, would have, you would have seen in digital multimeters also that the same instrument can be used with a simple switch. It can be used to measure very low voltages to very high voltages also. And in a digital instrument or in particular a digital voltmeter, you can have circuitry that self calibrates. Uh, now what is self calibration? You see that when you had an analog instrument, you had a meter constant. Okay. And you need to, needed to know this meter constant to get the relationship between what was the voltage that was being measured and what was the deflection that is that was being displayed. Okay. Now, in case of a digital instrument, uh, it can be configured. It can be it can be configured in such a manner that the count or or the reading can self calibrate very easily. All it requires is one standard reference voltage and with one standard reference signal, it can self calibrate, it can determine what is its equivalent meter constant. Though there is no real meter constant in case of a digital instrument, it can determine this proportionality by itself. In addition, in addition, the range selection can also be automated so there can be auto ranging so without the user actually without the user not requiring to change the setting the appropriate range for the voltmeter or the instrument can be can also be programmed into the instrument itself and you can also have a circuit that uh, detects and senses whether the voltage being measured is positive or negative. So the polarity sensing can also be incorporated into the, into the instrument itself. Okay. Now in this lecture, we look into uh, four types of digital voltmeters. Depending upon the factors like speed, range, resolution, there are various types of uh, uh, digital voltmeter operations. We will look at four uh, different principles that can be used, which are the simplest of what you usually encounter. Okay, now the first uh, type of digital voltmeter that we'll look is the RAM type digital voltmeter. Now in this type of digital voltmeter, essentially what you are measuring is the time interval uh, using a counter. Okay, so you measure the time interval between two events, two particular events and measure the number of pulses that are that happen within this time interval, count the number of pulses and if you know the clock cycle, you know the time interval and from the time interval you are trying to figure out what is the voltage. Okay, And as the name implies, this time interval is the one that is taken that uh, that it takes for a ram signal to either grow from zero to the input voltage so if this was the input voltage it is this time interval t or it may be the other way around also it can go from v to zero so it can it can go from v it can start from v and it can go to zero it can be this time interval also. Note that we can V also can be a signal that is less than zero. So so it can start from zero here or rather here and it can go down and reach V a negative voltage at some point of time t. In any case in a ram type voltmeter 
this time difference is measured indirectly by measuring the number of clock pulses between these two events where it where the ramp signal crosses v and whether the where the ramp signal crosses zero okay and it is assumed that this time would be proportional to the voltage that is being measured if the ramp slope is constant and if the ramp slope is known the reading is as reliable as the accuracy of the knowledge of the ramp signals slope okay now let us look into how this actually works out okay so in the ramp type digital voltmeter as i said earlier you are measuring the time difference between the ramp signal being equal to the input voltage and the ramp signal being equal to zero so you have a ramp signal ramp generator a ramp signal generator you have a oscillator uh, which counts the number of pulses no sorry uh, this is this is sample rate oscillator it is an oscillator that triggers this ramp signal once per measurement cycle okay and this time based oscillator is the counter okay now what is happening is that this ramp signal is being compared with two signals one is the input signal and one is a ground comparator okay and the output of this comparison output of these two comparator is worked out now let us see uh, more detail in more detail how this entire thing works out okay so from the <coughs> counter the the measurement counter starts the sample rate oscillator gives a pulse and the measurement starts okay and the ramp generator starts a ramp signal now in this case it is starting from the maximum voltage that is 12 volts and it starts to go down as indicated here the ramp signal goes down and goes towards this minimum value that is minus 12 volts okay and the measurement is starting at and it is this ramp signal is to be compared with two different signal one is the input and one is the ground okay and the gate will get toggled when the coincidence uh, when each of the coincidences happen so now in this particular case the first coincidence is happening at the unknown voltage level here okay and now since the first coincidence happen the gate o gate is open and the uh, pulses are clock pulses are being counted and the gate remains open until the second comparator uh, gets triggered then the gate closes so now the ramp signal has gone to zero and the number of clock, clock pulses have been measured and have been counted then after this the ramp signal continues till a minimum minimum is reached and then it gets reset again to be ready for the next measurement and during this period where the ramp signal is resetting this number this measured quantity the number of clock pulses are converted to an to the equivalent uh, voltage and if the slope of this ramp signal is known and it is known to be a constant then it can be easily ascertained that the voltage signal Uh, the value of that voltage signal will be proportional to the number of clock pulses and the polarity of the signal is decided by the sequence in which the comparators are triggered so in this case since the voltage the ramp signal was going down and the unknown voltage was triggered before zero which would mean that unknown voltage was positive okay now coming to the advantage and disadvantage of the ramp type dvm 
as uh, as seen this is a this is one of the simplest constructions it is it has a very easy design and consequently the circuitry required is also quite low however the it is it is a must that the ram signal that is being generated is so it should be linear and its slope should be known in addition the clock pulse frequency should also be known in precision because if i have n clock pulses then n times uh, and if i know if only if i know the frequency of the clock pulse or the time period of the clock pulse only then do i actually know what is the time for which what is the time between these two uh, the two triggers or the two comparators being triggered okay so the frequency of the clock pulse should also be known in addition the slope of the ramp signal should also be known for the ramp type dvm to work out okay and to alleviate one of these problems we have a staircase ramp where instead of relying on the slope you actually find what was the what is the actual signal being compared so at each point of instead of actually comparing with the ramp signal what you now do is you compare with the staircase ramp and in each of these comparisons you actually know what is the value of these voltages that are being compared in the staircase ramp and hence it is more reliable and less ambiguous okay so in the in the staircase ramp you have a sample rate oscillator okay now in this case you have a two hertz sample oscillator which means that it is taking two measurements per second and this oscillator triggers a counter through this flip flops and the counter uh, it triggers this decade counter so that the counting and the display can be done in a manner that is decimal and so the displays are really readable okay and the output of these counters uh, are passed through different dacs so that a staircase ramp is uh, a different dacs and some summing amplifier so that ultimately a staircase signal is being generated here okay from the counter values okay and this staircase signal is now compared with a scaled version of the input signal okay and whenever the comparator changes its state so that say so let us say that the voltage was at this level okay so before that the comparator would have said that is uh, the sampler or or the staircase is less than the input voltage and after this it says says that staircase is greater than input voltage so when whenever this change happens that is the closest instance of the from this change is what is regarded as the actual reading okay now this uh, the sample oscillator triggers the transfer amplifier once the uh, once one cycle of measurement is done and whatever was the reading or counter that had that was closest to the a place where the sample where where the comparator change state that is transferred into the display and the display is held steady uh, for better readability okay the coming to the advantages and disadvantages of the staircase ramp digital voltmeter as with the case of the ramp digital voltmeter the design is again simple and low cost however in this case 
the accuracy of the DAC is quite important. We should know that which count corresponds to which voltage value. Okay. Now, if you look at this, in these two digital voltmeters that we have talked about till now, the ramp digital voltmeter and the staircase ramp digital voltmeter, the ramp digital voltmeter required precise knowledge of both the voltage change per clock pulse for the ramp signal. Basically, it required the voltage change per, per clock pulse for the ramp signal. Okay. And if you simplify it, what it needed was knowledge about the slope of the signal and also about the clock pulse frequency. In case of the staircase ramp, what it requires is that the ADC conversion factor should be known precisely. Now, in case of a dual slope integrating ramp, what you basically, what your sort of uh, eliminating all these requirements by having an additional reference signal and in this case only the reference voltage needs to be standard so if you have a vref if i know the value of vref precisely and also that the uh, clock frequency is constant okay i don't need the clock frequency I just assume that the clock frequency is constant. With these two factors alone, we can get a reliable reading for, for a voltage from the dual slope ramp digital voltmeter. Okay. And the reading that you were that you get is determined by comparison of the slope of the ramp signals generated by the input voltage and by the reference voltage, by known reference voltage. Okay, so this is the circuitry for a dual slope integrating type DVM. As I said earlier, there are two sources here. Okay, there is an integrated circuit and, and through a switching mechanism, the input to the integrator can either be the unknown voltage Vx here or the known reference voltage Vref. Okay. And by comparing both of these signals, we can we'll determine Vx. Now, how is this being done? Now, in each measurement cycle, first the integrator is discharged so that the output of the integrator here, the Vo at this point, is zero. Okay. Then the unknown voltage Vx is selected as the signal. Okay, now the slope, since it's an integrator, the slope of this ramp signal will now be proportional to the unknown voltage Vx. Okay, and Vx is made as, is kept as the in input for a fixed amount of time, for a fixed number of pulses actually. Okay, so for T1, for a time period T1 or some N1 number of pulses, we have Vx as the input and the uh, integrator charges to some value v okay now after this time t the input is switched from vx to vref and now it is ensured that vx vref has the oppo opposite polarity of vx now the counter again starts and the clock pulses are counted till the output goes to zero. Now let us say that is N2. Okay. Then once this stops, the counter also stops and the and the integrator is also disconnected. So the VO remains at zero. Okay. Now coming to the mathematics of it, so we know that for an op-amp based integrator, if VI is the input and V1 is the initial value, at any time T the output would be given by this expression okay now we are assuming that it's an op-amp based integrator so the there is a negative gain here so it's that's why it's written as minus vit by rc okay now in this case first we are using 
vi is equal to vx and the initial value v1 is 0 and the integrator is charging for t1 seconds. So the output voltage at t1 would be given by minus vx times t1 divided by rc. Now after this for t2 seconds the integrator is just discharging with vref being applied in the opposite polarity. So from that we get this equation and uh, by substituting the value of vo of t1 what we end up with is vx is equal to t2 by t1 times vref. However what you should also note is that now you need not know the value of t2 and t1 because t if i if i assume that the clock pulse frequency was constant t2 would be proportional to n2 and t1 will be proportional to n1 okay so t2 by t1 is n2 by n1 okay which would mean that vx can be written as n2 by n1 times vref okay n1 is known because n1 is because t1 was uh, is basically counting n1 only so n1 is a is a fixed quantity and n2 is the only quantity that is being measured and vref is assumed to be known so by just making one measurement and making only one assumption of the knowledge of a reference value we are able to determine the unknown voltage or measure the unknown voltage okay and so the setup requires only a reliable value of vref and the assumption that the clock pulse has a stable rate Okay. There is, there can be one source of error that can creep into this sort of a digital voltmeter because what we are, we are assuming that we start from zero. So VO is zero at the initial, at the start of the measurement that is being assumed and you do, you have this ramping down and ramping up until VO goes to zero again. So the assumption that initially VO, VO was zero is very critical for the proper measurement. So that can be ensured by having the zero correction. Okay. And why what may, can be source of error is that because this is an, this is an op amp, there are other <coughs> and it has to be biased um, with proper voltages. There can be a zero offset because or there can be bias current inside this inside the op amps itself inside the amplifiers okay and the zero correct correction can be incorporated by having a zero capacitor okay connected to the integrator output so whenever the integrator is not being used so you have an additional connection to ground in addition to vref also so when it is grounded the capacity the integrator will discharge until the output becomes zero okay coming to the advantages and disadvantages of the dual slope dvm because of this zero correction circuit the there is automatic zero correction because of the less number of assumptions we, we already needed what was vref and the assumption that the clock frequency was constant okay not even known just constant it has better accuracy and it is better sense better insensitive to noise okay other external factors cannot affect it Okay. However, uh, what should be noted is that there are two ramp comparison that is there is a charging and a discharging cycle whereas in the other in the ramp type DVM 
or a staircase ramp DP, DVM, there was only one comparison. There was only one ramp that was involved. So this is this the measurement cycle here is much slower. Maybe it measures only at half the rate at which the other DVM, the other earlier DVMs can measure. And due to the presence of the, an integrated circuit, any leakage current in the capacitor can also cause errors. Okay. Coming to the fourth type of DBM that we'll discuss today, this is the successive approximation conversion DBM. So <coughs> I've seen in the all the all the DBMs that we've seen until now in today's lecture, uh, there were a series of comparison and basically the length of the, the, the frequency of the measurement or the rate at which the measurements can happen depends upon two factors one is the time taken for each one is the number of comparisons okay and probably the time taken for each comparison okay so now in the successive approximation uh, dbm this is speeding up this process by minimizing the number of comparisons okay it builds on on the staircase ramp DVM and so and in the staircase ramp DVM we have seen that all the rate at which the ramp increases or decreases is independent of the input voltage that is one thing and the difference between two successive voltage levels that are being compared is basically constant it depends upon the resolution in the successive approximation DVM, what you are doing is you are changing both of these. You make the voltage levels, the successive voltage levels that are being compared depend upon what was VI and basically what was the previous comparison. Okay, So it generates a sequence of reference signals based on the current register value, current value of this and also the comparator output okay now <laughs> the logic uh, boils down to n sets of comparison so and the comparison is used to determine the digital equivalent of the voltage one bit at a time so if you have an n bit representation required for the display there would just be n comparison that would be required the logic for this proceeds like this so you have a successive approximation register here okay here you have a successive approximation register and initially the re register is set to zero and the input value is compared with the analog equivalent of the sar value and after the ith comparison if the input voltage is greater than the value in the register then the ith significant bit is set to 1. On the other hand if it is lower then the ith significant bit is set to 0 and the i plus 1 significant bit is set to 1. And these two steps are repeated again and again. Okay, So these, these two steps are repeated again and again. And Finally, after n comparison, the value in the register would be equal to the desired digital output. So let's take an example and to better understand what is happening here. Now here in this case, we are taking a 9-bit register. So it will go from 0 to 2 raised to 9 minus 1. So that is 511. Okay, and we assume that the input value is comparing comparable to the value of the digital equivalent of 301. Okay, so as I said earlier, the it goes it starts with an all zeros. Okay, and the input voltage is greater than V reference, so the first bit is set to one. Okay, so the value is now 256. Still, the input is greater than V ref. Okay. Then the second bit is also 
set to 1. Now the value has become 384. So the input is less than the reference value. Okay. So which would mean that the second value, second bit is set to 0 and the third bit is set to 1. Okay. Still the value is, the input is less than the reference value. So the third bit is set to 0 and the fourth bit is set to 1. Now the comparator has flipped again. Okay. Then again and this goes on until you reach the last bit and the value is achieved. Maybe the digital equivalent is computed correctly and now this value is will be displayed. Okay. So hope that will clarify how this uh, type of a DVM works out. Okay. Coming to the advantages and disadvantages of the success approximation register DVM. Okay. This, the main advantage is that it is also very accurate. Okay. And the con conversion time, instead of being proportional to the value of V in, it, is, it just is proportional to the number of bits. However, it is always proportional to the number of bits being compared. It is never proportional to the value of the input being compared it is always proportional to the number of bits being compared okay and because of the presence of this approximation resistor the design logic is more complicated and also more costlier than the other three dvm logics that we have seen earlier okay so that brings us to the end of today's uh, lecture okay so for better understanding, you can see the <coughs> chapter on electronic instruments for measuring parameters, okay, from Helfrich Cooper and also chapter 14 of digital instrumentation by Bugans. Okay, thank you for your patience. With that, we come to the end of this lecture.